micro, small and medium scale enterprises are globally regarded as the backbone of any economy as they bring about substantial local capital formation and help in achieving high level of productivity and capability. According to the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, small and medium enterprises in Nigeria have contributed about 48% of the national GDP in the last five years with about 17.4 million and they account for 84% of employment and nearly 90% of the manufacturing sector regarding uh, the number of enterprises. First, the industry has over time grown to become an indispensable part of the economy. Nigeria is no doubt home to one of the fastest tech ecosystems in Africa and the world. In 2019 alone, the country's startups were backed by more than $600 million in venture capital funding. However, Nigeria's startup sector faces several challenges as the country's tech ecosystem is expanding. The world is paying closer attention to it. In a bid to support the sector, the AFDB has agreed to support tech-based MSMEs with a sum of $500 million in addition to the federal government's $75 billion MSME survival fund. The founder, MSMEs Africa, is already in the studio, Mr. Shaye Olurotimi. Good afternoon, Mr. Olurotimi. It's good to see you. Good afternoon. It's good to be here again. Yes, over $500 million is what we are talking about uh, here from the AFDB. Uh, first, how would you react to this being in that MSME space? I saw this as a very good news for you guys. How else will I react? It's, it's a piece of good news, and I'm sure it's some good news to the MSME and the tech ecosystem in Nigeria mm -hmm. because it shows that um, there is a lot of belief and trust in the tech ecosystem, in the MSME space, and that's why um, a big body like a African Development Bank will want to pump money into that sector. So it's good news. Mm. But when this money is come, we hear a lot, a lot. You are players in the field. How, what effect do you see this $500 million having? Like the Vice President identified, we already had the $75 billion mm -hmm. Naira for MSME Survival Fund that was instituted after COVID-19 outbreak. Are this money is getting to your your guys, your colleagues, and all of you in this segment, in this ecosystem? Okay, so maybe a bit of history would help. Um, in late 2018, the vice president announced that um, federal government was in talks with um, African Development Bank for this um, $500 million innovation fund for tech and um, creative space. And then two years down the line, we have the news that the fund has actually been approved by African Development Bank, good one. So we're asking if it's going to trickle and what's going to be the effect. Of course, the effect is that we're going to have a lot more businesses that are doing tech having the fund that they need to do what they want to do. Because the natural thing is if you're a tech um, organization, you're a tech startup, when you're even at the prestige stage, you are looking for um, venture capital yeah. to finance whatever you're doing, whether you're at the pre-seed, seed, early seed, whatever stage, you're always looking for fund, and that seems to be the trend. So you have an idea, you're looking for fund, then you get one round of fund, then you go for another round, another round. It seems like it never stops. So we believe with this kind of intervention, we're going to have a lot more fund that are not coming from VCs, a lot more patient capital, a lot more fund that will also ensure that, um, because the thing is, if you finance a particular startup, let's say employs 10 people. There's a probability, okay, so let's say we have 25 of them, yeah. they employ 10, which that's 250. So, and if you look at the trend with tech startups, for every new one that comes, they are probably working with an old one, they want to start new ones. So if two from each of the 10 move on to start their own tech startups and it keeps multiplying like that, that's multiplier effect. So I see the fund doing a lot, co I mean, combined with the 75 million youth investment fund from federal government, and uh, combined with other interventions, they would actually do a lot if they are properly managed, and that's it, if the funds are properly managed and are channeled to the right people that need it. Hmm. Very important, managed properly and then they are properly channeled to the right people. I don't have the information about how this is going to be disposed. I yeah. don't know if it's going to pass through mm -hmm. banks or whatever. We're see, I'm sure in, in coming days we're going to have that information. But if it gets to the right set of people and they use it for the right thing, I want to assure you it's going to be a lot, it's going to have a lot of effect on the economy. Considering the fact that the mainstay of Nigeria's economy, which is oil, is something that is already threatened. In oh, some of course. countries, of course. they are telling you by 2030, you cannot use a car that is powered by petrol. So that tells us that in 2030, petroleum is nothing, right? So we need to start looking at tech because tech is our new oil. So it's a good development, and I hope we are going to use it judiciously.
are we taking advantage of this tech industry as much as we should? I know that the central bank is also doing something around the creative sector, national theater renovation lot. to create jobs and all of this. But are we tapping very so? Because I think at the time, even in our GDP uh, figures, I think figures from the ICT space was looking brilliant. You know, are we really taking advantage? And if we are not. What more can we do? The AFDB is already seeing opportunities even more than us as a country. Okay, so I think we are not doing badly. I mean, recently the Nigerian tech ecos um, ecosystem overtook Kenya. And so if you're talking tech in Africa, you talk Nigeria, you talk Kenya, you talk South Africa, probably Ghana and some other ones. So I believe we're doing well, but I believe that we can actually do a lot more with what is coming our way. And then what about the environment where we're playing? Because we talk about funds being channeled to the sector. We talk about interventions. What about the policy environment? We're in this country where you see players in the tech ecosystem. They are being celebrated one moment. And then the following week, you see government clamping down on that particular sector. I'm talking about the right alien sector in Nigeria. The guys were there taking pictures. Everybody celebrating. And the next week, the following week, or probably two weeks after, they are clamping down on them. So let's look at our policy environment. Are we committing, um, I mean, co are we doing policy um, somersault where you have the fund, you, have, you seem to have an enabling environment, and then just in one moment, there's a policy that negates everything you've been doing, and then you have to start all over again or even go down. So we need to look at the policy environment. We need to look at the other factors because funding is, ju is just one of the factors. What about the other factors? If all those things are in place, I believe we would really maximize these interventions. Yes, yes, it's, it's true. Because it, it reminds me of uh, the Nigerian Innovation Program. There's a program okay. that is designed by also government to help improve um, uh, the ICT space, innovation, and all of that. And it's built on four pillars. And let me just read it out. Human capital, financing, infrastructure, an enabling environment. You've talked on, uh, we've talked about financing now, which mm -hmm. is somewhere uh, we're getting a headway around that. Let's now look at infrastructure and an enabling business environment. Let's look at a straight example. Some businesses are even going to Ghana. I just spoke to somebody in Ghana, and uh, you can see leaving Nigeria to move to Ghana. Insecurity is also one issue. Yes. What do you make of in the infrastructure issues and enabling environment infrastructure for the infrastructure enabling environment yeah like you said um, businesses are leaving nigeria yes. they are going to ghana they are yes. going to rwanda they are going to even north africa and it's not a good one so there's a report by pwc in 2020 that says i think 21 percent of cost to msmes goes into electricity so if I spend 21% on power, that's mm. already a problem. So whatever intervention I'm getting, whatever mileage I'm supposed to get from other intervention, this is already tracking it down. Mm. And now let's talk about um, um, road. Let's talk about our transport system. If you want to go somewhere in Lagos, spend two, three hours in traffic, that is not productive. You, nobody survives on that, kind of, uh, on that kind of system. Then we look at the other thing, the policy environment. A lot of things are not working. So infrastructure, I, I've talked about electricity, I've talked about the road network, I've talked about some other things. Then you look at the area of multiple taxes, you don't even know what taxes you are meant to, play, uh, to pay mm. revenues here and there. Then you want to register with some of the regulators, it becomes a big problem, you have to go through it out. These are major, major issues. Infrastructure is a big problem, the policy environment, even the, all other environmental factors. Let's fix this thing, let the government sit down. Let the government understand that this sector, MSMEs, we have 41.5 million MSMEs. Like you rightly said, they contribute up to 80% to our army, um, to employment, and close to 50% to GDP. So if you take them serious, we'll actually sit down with these tech guys and ask them what are the problems, because these guys are the future. So if you are looking at the future of Nigeria, yeah. the guys that are between 18 and probably 40, the guys that are doing a lot with tech, they are the future. Why are we not dialoguing with them now? Why are we not asking them, what can we do to ensure that you guys put everything in here? Because a lot of them are actually venturing out of Nigeria. They have their headquarters here, but they're doing a lot more outside the country. This is the future. We need to actually have a dialogue and ensure that these guys try. That is the next thing we should be talking about. So, so some will talk about, uh, like, uh, looking at back to the AFDB fund, there's going to be, uh, I think, a partnership, of course, public and private sector yes. coming together. Because when issues like this pop up, I don't think it's supposed to just be handled by the public sector. I think a lot of roles need to be played by the private sector because private guys would always want to see results. Definitely. So what more do you think uh, with regards to cooperation between public and private sector to strengthen the entire MSME space now, not even limiting it to tech? Okay, so there is a lot of um, 
trust and believe when government involves the private sector in whatever they are doing. I remember when they were launching the MSME Survivor Fund and they said um, Mrs. Ibuku Awashika was going to be the vice president or so of the committee. A lot of people were like, this is commendable because people have a lot more trust in the private sector. So whatever government is trying to do, it's either government is starting it and getting the private sector involved or they are providing the stimulus for the private sector to actually do the things they want to do. So you have the likes of Tony Elumelu Foundation, and you know what they've been doing for so many years. You have uh, organizations like Faith Foundation and some other organizations that are actually doing a lot to enable entrepreneurs to thrive and grow. And that's part of what we do in MSM Africa too. So the government should actually call these people. And I think it's happening. Last week, I just got a call from Lagos State, Minister of Wealth Creation, saying, oh, I mean, they're, they're trying to talk to some partners, and they're saying we should come and have be part of the session they want to have tomorrow. So those are the kind of things we're looking at. Call people in the private sector, ask them for their opinions, ask for their inputs, when you need to appoint them on to several committees, appoint them so that they can bring in their own word of experience and look at things from their own perspective. I think if we keep doing that, we'll have a lot more results. This uh, ICT space again, back to the space, I think many see opportunities for jobs yeah, and, um, you know, jobs and jobs and jobs all all over uh to the ict space do you also think that there's a lot of opportunities in that space that we are really uh yet to, to take advantage of because i'm looking at this move now by afdb it says it is to boost innovation and of course create job job creation and foster growth of technology and creativity uh, across board uh what, what do you make of of that thought did the, I mean, I, I, I can't even, there is no way you can even you can quantify it. You cannot quantify how much potential exists within the tech space, the ICT space, because that is the future. Everything you're doing now has to be driven by technology. Hmm. What we're doing now is driven sure. by technology. So sure. when we say tech startups or when we sure. say tech enabled businesses, you think it's just those guys that are doing all tech, all tech. But even fashion designing, you can drive it with tech. Whatever business you're doing, you can drive it with tech. Agri, agri business you can address. So that's why we're talking about fintech, we're talking about edtech, we're talking about um, medtech, and all form of technology-driven businesses. So there is a lot of potential. And I'm really not surprised that AFDB is doing this because I, I need to commend them. AFDB has always been at the forefront of helping yes. MSMEs. Yes. I remember in 2014, AFDB gave, I mean, they approved $500 million, the same amount we're talking about now, for the establishment of the Development Bank of Nigeria. And then $450 million, was, or $50 million was meant to be loan and 50%, and $50 million was meant to be their own equity. So they've actually been doing a lot, and yeah. it shows that they believe in the MSME space. They believe in innovation. They believe in technology. They believe in what small businesses can do mm. when we aggregate all their efforts together. Mm. Okay, almost wrapping up now. When we have all of this, we have the finance, we have the infrastructure, maybe the ease of doing business, right policies in place. What about human capacity? How yeah. well are you developing capacity of MSME players across the space? That's, that's a big, a big, big factor. And if you ask any MSME, especially those ones that have been in business for like five years, they will tell you one of the major problems is people, people, people. Even the owners of the business, they need to develop their own capacity. A lot of businesses that fail, they fail because the owners just heard about sack your boss, become an entrepreneur. And the next thing, they just jump shift from paid employment, they want to run business without knowing how to run a business. And in that case, a lot of them fail. Then also talk about the employees. Most of the employees that work for MSMEs are just there to a while away time. They are looking at your Tuesday Guardian, they are checking online, um, um, online job website for the next big job because they believe that this business is just a stopgap for me. So if we keep having people that have such orientation as employees within the MSME space, there is a lot of problem. So we need to start looking at how we can develop capacities of people that work with MSMEs, right? We need to start looking at how we can ensure that they also see themselves as part of the business. Because the problem is, if the business is doing well and they see a guy going to go and free time where all the money is going on, on vacation right, in the sure. Bahamas, he's going on vacation everywhere and he's posting it on Instagram, chilling in the Bahamas and what have you. And the guys working with him are saying, what is our own lot? They are looking for the next job. So we need to ensure that they see themselves as stakeholders. I'm talking about the employees so yeah. that we can have a wholesome, a very, very effective human capital in that space. There is a lot of problem with people that work with MSMEs and even the MSME owners who don't even know how to run businesses. A lot of problem in that space. Mm. 
So let, 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 let's, let's wrap up uh, on this note. Are you worried about this third wave of COVID-19? Do you think it could have any effect on the gradual recovery that we are seeing? Looking at your space. Because ah. what's hit was MSMEs towards the COVID-19. Exactly. And, and so SARS. when we started having, um, hearing about the third wave, the Delta variant, yes. I would say I was worried. I was worried. But I, I don't think right now, if we put all the necessary measures in place, there shouldn't be a problem. I want to believe we have a lot of education from what has happened with the first and second wave. So I want to believe that if we take all the, pre um, the preventive measures, we would be fine. But there is still a cause for alarm. We need to not throw cautions to the wind. Hmm. Honestly, we need to keep washing our we hands. To. We are keeping social distancing, even exactly. in the studio. <laughs> so we are trying our best to do that. Once we leave here, we are all masked up. Uh, make sure you get vaccinated if you haven't been uh, vaccinated. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been speaking to a friend of the house, uh, Mr. Ashe Olurotimi. He's the founder of MSMA Africa. Speaking to the plan, 500 million US dollars uh, to be issued for tech sector in that MSME space. What that means and what should be expected. Thank you again and enjoy the rest Thank of your day. Thank you very much. All right then.